one of the best franchises of all time has to be Pokemon. I've been a fan of Pokemon since the very start, the mid-90s almost a quarter century ago, and I'm still playing the games. But even as a little kid, the whole business seemed a little bit strange to me. I mean, like, what exactly are these adorable little monsters that want to fight each other for our amusement? And there's something a little bit different to animals, because we can convert them to energy and back to matter and back to energy again, and all you have to do is throw this ball at them. Just, what are they? Welcome to Gonzo Philosophy, my name is Luke Zaffer, and today I'll be conducting a philosophical inquiry into what is a Pokemon. I'm tempted to just answer it now. You might say that Pokemon are little animals that we can do with what we will, and that might be based on the right conclusion. Or not. But, you know, we're forcing them to fight for us, so we should probably figure out what they are, and not just assume we know what they are, on the basis of having unclear assumptions and specious reasoning, right? Right? Any good inquiry starts with a question, and moreover, we need to know which questions we need to ask before we can answer them. If we've got any chance at all of figuring out how we should treat Pokemon, then we need to figure out how much they are like people. So, I guess the question that we need to be asking at this point is, are Pokemon people? And this has led us to our big question of the day. What is a person? I do not have an objectively correct answer, but I'm going to give it my all and see the best that I can do in this inquiry. We say that humans are people and pretty much none of the other creatures are. But really, what makes us so distinct? Are we being speciesist, or is there something legitimately special about humans? Here are the ideas that I came up with. We can reason, we feel, we learn, we're self-aware, we could choose to do differently. Our personhood has very little to do with the way that we actually look or our physical form. We're social creatures that can form intricate bonds and emotional ties. We're capable of abstract reasoning, ethical behavior, foresight, prediction, language, communication, maybe even art. I'm going to summarize this pretty hard and define it down to one of three things. Anything that can speak or communicate a human language, have a coherent ethical morality, or demonstrate coherent complex thought and emotion. I feel like I have to be really clear on this one that this is an incomplete definition. It is the best that I could come up with. That means that it's going to have problems with it. But in doing so, I've still created a rational framework. This definition can change, can grow, and can adapt. But we've got to admit to ourselves that it's not unproblematic. There are going to be exceptions that we need to address at some point. I've looked into the first 150 Pokemon and created three categories of people. That's people, the non-people, and the potential people. To do this, I've gone through all the Pokedex entries for all the games of the original 150 to understand exactly what each Pokemon does and so that we can understand what each Pokemon is. I have deliberately excluded the anime and movie stuff I would love to include them, but unfortunately, it's wildly inconsistent. And ultimately, this is about video games, not TV shows. People are those who fit those definitions that I made before, and non-people are the ones who don't. The indeterminate category, the potentials, are ones I'll get into a bit later. For the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to go through all 100 non-people Pokemon, but like, suffice it to say, you look at these things and they're basically animals. I mean, they might be super-powered in some way, but you know, it's just a huge animal that has the ability to shoot lightning or something like that. There's nothing more special about it other than that. It doesn't demonstrate any of those criteria that we developed just before. Now, I hear what you're saying. You're like, whoa, 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 Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee on this list? Like, look at them. They, they punch and kick and, you know, they're like Fisto Roboto over here. And just, well, we were established at the start that human form was not sufficient to get the job done, okay? These guys don't do anything other than punch or kick, which is just really no different to an animal biting or scratching. It's just they've got specialized appendages for it. It's a superficial comparison. 
I mean, you might want to argue that Growlithe is a dog with a job, and that makes him kind of a person, but, you know, we have dogs with jobs in the real world, and we don't treat them like people. And I'm sorry to say it, guys, but Mewtwo doesn't make the cut either. He's just a vicious animal. I mean, like, in the movies, he might be something different, but he's more like a honey badger here. He's mean-spirited and angry all the time. I was not born a Pokémon. I was created. And my creators have used and betrayed me. So, I stand alone. Here's the list of the people Pokemon that I was able to determine. Ninetales has complex emotions. It is a vengeful creature and will plan for a long time in order to achieve its vicious satisfaction. This is distinct from, say, Primate, who also has a vengeful spirit, but it's more of a I'm going to beat you up because I'm pissed off sort of thing, rather than I'm going to plan your downfall over a period of many long years before kindly finally getting you to see the error of your ways by offending me and then putting you in the ground. Is Ninetales a dick? Yes. But... A person, nonetheless. Cubone is a messed up thing. It feels emotions so profoundly and grief so badly that it'll wear its mother's skull as a helmet. It's just intensely feeling things. Has to fit our definition of a person. Jinx was a really nice easy case because it explicitly says that it understands human languages. It just com- chooses to communicate through dance and through song. But it can understand us just fine. That's a person. Both Machoke and Machamp are explicitly stated to be martial artists. That requires prediction and even a spirituality. Machamp is even explicitly stated to be a wrestler, which means just like pro wrestlers, they're basically almost human beings. Okay, well, Mr. Mime is a huge jerk and explicitly stated to be a con artist and even gets offended when you interrupt its scams, which means that they're just as smart and capable as Gwyneth Paltrow. Originally, Alakazam didn't make the cut and it annoyed me to have to redo my tables and graphics to incorporate it. But this is an object lesson in being willing to be wrong. It sucks and it's frustrating to redo work, but the process is more important than the outcome. So here we are. Alakazam is said to be really, really smart. Now, does having an IQ of 5,000 make him a person? No, of course not. Just browsing R, I am very smart for five minutes shows that smartness doesn't make you a person. No, 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 no. For Alakazam, it's his spoons. Yep, that's what gets him in. He has the creativity to build tools that amplify his power. That's higher order thinking skills if ever I heard them. Charizard is a nice, simple one. They have a warrior ethic. They're said to be in search of strong opponents and will never scorch a weaker opponent, which is a morality at work. It has discernment, and that is explicitly a higher order thinking skill. Charizards are people. Dragonite is the last of the 150 to make it into the Pokedex, as it says flat out that it's just as intelligent as a human being, and if that wasn't enough, it created a career as a lifeguard. That's both a higher order thinking skill, an ethic, and a sophisticated emotion all at once. It feels compassion to people, and that's why Dragonite is the best Pokemon. Lastly, I wanted to discuss the middle category of potentials or indeterminates. This means that they might be people in the future, or there is implied personhood, but I just didn't have enough detail to confirm it. Ghosts were nearly impossible to categorize, as they are, well, they're they're dead things come back to life. I mean, are ghosts people? I, I have no idea, and I'm not touching them further. I'm putting them into determinant category and just leaving it be. The pre evolved forms of Pokemon are clearly potential people in the future. They aren't yet, but if Charmander reaches for the stars, he might become a person one day. But he's not yet. There are ones that implied some things, but I couldn't make a judgement. Clefable is a good example. It seems to feel intense homesickness and longing for the moon. Or perhaps it's existential ennui, but either way, it's not clear. I can't ascribe personhood yet. And there you have it. 
There aren't that many Pokemon that are people. Just as a reminder, we started off by looking at what question we wanted to interrogate and discovered that there were deeper questions to explore first. We looked at the underlying assumptions and then we defined the parameters, which ones we were going to investigate and how we were going to look at that by looking into the Pokedex entries from the games. Then we applied our analysis and then found our answers as a result. We didn't start with what we thought were people, and in fact, we had to revise it once or twice, and thus we have our analysis. Thanks for sticking around for this really long Gonzo philosophy, everyone. It took forever to go through all that information, and it's definitely been a good use of my time while in lockdown isolation. If you'd like to see a follow-up about the ethics of Pokemon, let me know in the comments. Alternatively, if you think I'm wrong about the categories, or which one should make the cut, let me know. Perhaps you've figured out a Pokemon from the next 150 that are people.